Hey, look who's here on the curvy couch. Our old buddy, Michelle yeah, Malkin, has come down from the mountain where she's been raising her kids. Good to have you. Thanks so much for having me back. It's like a family reunion. I know. It's it's great. Great. I'm getting overcome with emotion. It's great. <laughs> great. <laughs> yeah, we saw each other on a different turf. Oh, yes. Yes. Much less friendlier territory. Now I really am among friends. Yes, yes. You are. It's great to have you. Uh, we want to talk a little bit about politics. Hillary Clinton uh, came down from her mountain yesterday. Mm -hmm. She maintained radio silence for a very long time. She finally answered some questions, I think five or six, over five or six minutes. Here she is referring to talking about Sidney Blumenthal, uh, one of her aides and confidants, who was on the front page of the New York Times yesterday, not in a good way. Uh, she was asked about the relationship, and she had this to say. I have many, many old friends, and uh, I always think that uh, uh, it's important when you get into politics to have friends you had before you were in politics and to understand uh, what's on their minds. And he's been a friend of mine for a long time. He sent me unsolicited uh, emails, which I uh, passed on in some instances. Uh, and I see uh, that that's just part of the give and take. When you're in, when you're in the public eye and when you're in an official position, I think you do have to work to make sure you're not caught in a bubble and you only hear from a certain small group of people. And I'm going to keep talking to my old friends, uh, whoever they are. Oh, fine. Let's put that to bed. <laughs> yeah. that, that makes total sense. You just wanted yeah. to stay grounded. Right. Yeah, that's right. You know, this woman lays it on thicker than a John Deere manure spreader. <laughs> and the Clintons never answer questions. They evade them. And the, invoking the friend card really she thinks this is going to work well apparently it has because of course it took this long for the fish wrap of record the New York Times to finally <laughs> deign to recognize the story right. which has been floating around for months now about Sid Vicious Blumenthal well, the hitman uh, working his magic behind the scenes there but Michelle it's almost back to the future it's the same thing different topic different incident and yet her Democratic support does not budge how do you explain that well you know the culture of corruption runs very deep. I mean, it is has been an incurable disease on the, in the Democratic Party, and they've become completely inured to it, it among uh, voters. And it really, of course, does not help that we have this whitewashing media that has covered her from back in the days when the White House Travel Office and China Gate and and uh, and, and all the rest, when Sidney Blumenthal was, you know, mm -hmm. in his in full bloom in Washington D.C. Yeah. Well, and that, of course, you know that phrase there. In some instances. What is she covering up? What emails have been deleted from? What Sid mail have we not seen Sid yet? Sid mail. Right. Well, she's a lawyer, and so everything is parsed. And speaking of the media, George Stephanopoulos, it was revealed last week, much to his embarrassment, that he has donated a lot of money to the uh, Clinton Foundation. And when he has attacked, for instance, when he was attacking Peter Schweitzer uh, about 10 days ago regarding his book, it looked like he was a Clinton attack dog. And now, as it turns out, he was. <laughs> and this uh, new Rasmussen poll shows that a uh, plurality of Americans say he should not be involved in their presidential campaign at ABC at all. Yeah, that's right. And the people who were polled, of course, have a heck of a lot more common sense than the news officials at ABC who have looked the other way at this from the very day that he was hired. And this is one of my all-time pet peeves. You know, it's not the presence of bias that's a problem in the so-called mainstream media. It's always the pretense of objectivity mm -hmm. and the double standard. Michelle, Tim Russert really had no problem, and Diane Sawyer, for the most part, worked for Nixon. There was no problem. That's right? what they went with. Because, well, because there was full, transparent, honest disclosure. And here we've yeah. had this kabuki theater of journalism. I wouldn't mind if, if, if there were more of a balance here where people who were on the conservative side of the aisle were allowed to be as mainstreamed as George Stephanopoulos has gotten away with for so long. There. Let me ask you about this now, shifting gears again. Mm -hmm. Ramadi has fallen into the hands of ISIS right now. Yet the White House, we heard uh, Press Secretary Josh Earnest yesterday say that our, our strategy against ISIS is is a, a success. It's working. You say? Yeah, What's yeah he should have stopped at well, uh, <laughs> in, in, the, in that answer. And uh, it, it's, it's so daunting when you think of how these people define success because it chills me to the bone uh, to prepare for when we have failure. I mean, we've had Yemen fall. We've had Gitmo recidivism. Where is Abu Kamu? The Benghazi uh, guy who was released from, from Gitmo just still walking mm -hmm. out there. And uh, how, how many more ticking time bombs there are out there? And, of course, it's not just the, the fall 
of all of these places overseas, but the fact that ISIS has come here. Sure. Right. No. So, now I got to bring you to something else that you might want to talk about. This is a fantastic idea. It's called Who Built That? This is your latest book, and it's fantastic. That sounds familiar. Yeah, yeah. It's yeah. all inspiring stories of American tinkerpreneurs. Yeah, yeah but they didn't build that. No. Uh, <laughs> well, I love the way you started. Many of you know me as the angry brown lady on cable TV. <laughs> That's right. But you're much more than that. <laughs> you yeah. have a passion for this. I love yeah. you. I, I, thank you. You know, uh, I was inspired to write this book, and I dedicated it to President Obama, and he better read it because we're sending it to him straight to the White House. And I started out in that angry cable TV lady mode, but I ended up writing what I think is an incredibly joyful book. And I think it's time, especially for free market conservatives like myself and others who are fighting in the public sphere, to fill this vacuum. And these are stories, it's a treasury of stories that you can actually read out loud and share with your kids. Unsung to Give me an example. Give me well, example. Who's well, your favorite? Well, the first chapter, which I write about in a column today, and you can see it on michellemalkin.com, get a, a preview of, of the book, is Anthony Maglica. And by the way, he's a huge fan of Fox News. I went and visited him as, at his Ontario headquarters in California, head of Maglite. Uh, flashlight. Oh, sure. The creator sure. of the Maglite flashlight. And of course, anybody who is in law enforcement, and, and everyone's got one in their home. We do. This iconic symbol, he's a torchbearer of the American dream, came here with nothing from an island off of Croatia. $120 in 20 English words is how he puts it. What he, all he had. And built this you know, multi-billion dollar business from nothing, loves this country, and um, won't stop. Unlike the golfer in chief at 1600 Pennsylvania <laughs> Avenue, this guy's 84 years old, hasn't taken a vacation in 10 years, and doesn't plan on stopping. Now, what do we have uh, in the White House? A guy who denigrates people, who take credit mm -hmm. for their success and refuse the government's hand in the success, that well, success of their these, businesses. Uh, what, what are you hoping that people get by highlighting these entrepreneurs who took great risks and, and in these cases had great success? Look, I want people to understand, and particularly children, homeschool children, I want grandparents to be reading this to, to their grandkids, that it's the free exchange of voluntary exchange of goods and services mi millions of times a day that happens in this country that it, it's the American exceptionalism. This is what we, we should not be ashamed of it. Part of this book is a manifesto against the wealth shaming of the progressives and Obama. What was he doing last week? He was calling people who are successful society's lottery winners. Yeah. Right. This is the guy who tells people at a certain point you've earned enough money. No, you're not the decider of our success and happiness. That's the American people. That's our history. And and it's, and it's deriving the joy and the pride and restoring that again. And I would like to see every Republican candidate be able to talk about this in, sure. in, a, in, a, in a competent manner. I think that's our problem. How can we not sell freedom? It's the best product on the face of this earth. Right. We saw the angry face a moment ago. You want to, there's the happy face <laughs> right there. You know what? It, it is a great book. It's called Who Built That? Michelle, great to have you back you here. You too. It's so good to so see good you to all. See you. Take care. Great to see you. I'll see you on radio. Yeah, you bet. Absolutely. <laughs>